Yo guys, what's up? So, I just discovered this super cool chat feature in Roblox, and I honestly wanted to share this with you guys. I know it's been a while since I've made a tutorial, but I think this would actually be a good quick one to add. So, Roblox added this super neat, easily customizable chat, and as you can see, my chat's literally red. You could change the font super easily, and you could even add prefixes, again, super easily to your code without having to write all the extra script. As you'll see in a second, my script is actually only like around 20 lines long. So from your model tab, you just want to click service. So again, this is only if you have not updated your base play or updated your game recently because the older versions of the base play do not have this. So go to your service, find the service named tech, sorry, text chat service and just insert it from here. Super easy. So from here, all we're gonna do is go to our starter player and then in starter player, go to your starter player scripts. So we're going to add a local script. So the local script is actually gonna allow us to write some code that the, only the client will see, of course. And the new chat actually renders solely on the client versus the old chat, the legacy version, that renders only on the server. So, in this way, it's a bit better, it's a bit chaotic in my opinion, but I think it's still very nice. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create a variable named, let me just zoom in a bit, text chat service. And this is just going to get the Roblox's text chat service. And we're also going to create the player's file or service get that real quick so the text chat service having this will allow us to actually re see when messages are being received when they're getting sent out but here we're actually more interested on when they're being received versus when they're being sent so we're actually going to utilize this event called on incoming message and this is actually um, not necessarily an event you could think of it like a function you're it's almost like a client invoke, which are always bad, never do that. So we're going to actually just set this equal to a function that takes a parameter as a message. So this message will contain the players, all the contents of it. So that includes the prefix, the actual like message, what is included within it, and anything that you'll need. The player that sends it, you'll notice that there is no player, um, no player object being passed through which makes things a bit more complicated but it's really not that bad so we'll just type in local player and then we'll get the player pretty simply just by getting the uh, sorry get player by user id is what i wanted to type and then message dot text source dot user id so the text source is the player that sent it and the user id is the ID of the player who sent it. So that's all we need. Get that player. And we'll just make sure that the player is still existent. In case they leave, we don't want to uh, process any of this information. So now to create our own message properties, we actually have to create a new instance. So this will act as our new message. <coughs> so what we'll do now is just edit a few things within this. So I'm actually going to show you how to color the prefixes too. So if you're familiar with any type of markup language, in particular uh, HTML, it's very similar how we're going to be coloring the objects or the text. It uses something called rich text. Um, this is kind of new, it's not too new, but it was recently introduced within the past like a year or two, I think. So it will allow us to color the prefixes. So yeah, we'll be able to color with this new rich text feature that Roblox added. So what I'm going to do is say properties dot prefix text. So this is everything that will be included with the player's name. So you'll notice whenever I type out a message, it just says my name, like Joel, and then it says something else. Um, that's the prefix. So what we want to do in this case is I'm going to show you how to for example, pad the player's name with something like admin, moderator, 
anything you want. So we'll do this by just having a table with a few values. Sorry, a table with a few few different values in it. So we'll have the table containing, I guess, an admin in this case. And again, this is the key. If you're not familiar with tables, you can always find many videos. There's plenty of do different documentation types on this already, so no reason in going in explaining this in more deep detail. So this key will contain another table, and this table will contain a name, and the name of this will obviously just be admin, and the color. So <clears throat> rich text, in this case, we'll use hexadecimal. So hexadecimal color values, which are like six character values. And it's not that hard to get. You'll set a search up online, hexadecimal color converter, something like that, and grab the value. But I already have a few defined here for the tutorial. So I'm just gonna grab it. This will be like the color I had in the intro, kind of like an orangish color. And I'll also add a moderator. Now we're going to change the prefix text. And I'm going to actually use the concatenation syntax to um, make this a bit shorter. We're going to start off with the font tag and we'll set the color equal to one of these two player tags that we have up here. So in this case, I'm going to set the player, I guess we'll use, I actually want to see what the moderator looks like. So we'll access the value at key moderator, the color value. You could act like, since we're accessing a table, think of it like this, right? We're going into the table, we're grabbing this value, and essentially we're pasting it there. Except we're just doing it by having this as a table. This, as you can see, like right now it might not seem very like simple or useful, practical, but in the future, when you're designing bit larger games and you have like a ton of these table values, trust me, it will make your life 10 times easier. So all we're going to do is finish this up by closing that tag. And now we'll put this square bracket. This will be like a rank indicator almost. Player tags. Oops, we'll do moderator again. And this time we're just going to grab the name value. and the closing tag. So we're almost there actually. The last thing we need to do <coughs> is append the prefix with the previous text that was there. Since we just created a new instance, it was completely empty. So that means we're gonna have to grab all the information again, append it to the front and we're set. And I'll do this rather quick. It's really not that long. And return properties. And that's the whole script. So what we'll do is I'm going to play the game. So let's see what I missed. So simply enough, I forgot to put the text in front of here. That was... I'm sure you guys probably saw that immediately. It just happened to type too fast. By the way, I'd like to comment. I do, I'm not a fan at all of this new Roblox UI, like all these new icons. In my opinion, it just looks very ugly and I don't, I'm not sure why they changed it. Oh wow, look at that. Um, it has all the rich text included. So I think this time it's because we forgot the single, the single quote. Make sure, do not forget that. And now it should work, I'm almost certain. Okay, let's see, finally, there we go. So it does say mod there. Of course, I had to have forgotten the closing bracket, but that's not that important. So mod, it's a slightly, 
I guess a pinkish color, so I didn't really choose the best color. <clears throat> but all you have to do to change the appearance of this is go to text chat service. Oh yeah, I should have mentioned this earlier. To actually enable this, click on text chat service. And then what you want to do is select chat version and legacy chat service. Or sorry, why did I say legacy chat? Switch from legacy chat service to text chat service. So that will enable the new chat. This is the old Roblox version. And if we click on this drop down, we'll see these three different um, instances. These are important because they allow us to customize each individual part of the chat. So the chat window configuration is this entire top window, all the messages that go in here. The chat input bar is just this area. In the bubble, that's just what pops up above your player's head. Right here. So it's pretty easy to change. For example, if I wanted to have a fantasy theme, you could easily, easily switch that. You could have a the luckiest guy font. You could even change the background colors, which is super neat. Couldn't, you definitely could not do that before from uh, what I know. Background color, text colors. It's up to you guys to just uh, play around with. Chat window. You could change the background color here as well. Let's see purple. So it can get pretty crazy with this. Uh, sorry guys for all the inconve slight inconveniences we had throughout the video. Just a little bugs. It didn't take too much time, but sorry if that was game changing. <laughs> Uh, thank you for watching this video. I know it's been a while. I'm hoping to get more tutorials out there in the future, but school's been busy, you know. I've been working my game. There's a lot of different factors included in this. So, again, I'd like to thank you guys for your patience. Um, I promise you I will get more tutorials for whatever I see is interesting, or you guys, like, if there's not a ton of videos on something, I'd like to make one. So, that's my goal here. Uh, Thank you guys for watching. Uh, have a great day or night, whatever time zone you are.